I met the girl with the shiniest wizard. I met the girl with the shiniest wizard. Hello, my name is Hobo Tom, and you are watching the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Review Show here on YouTube. Again, my name is Hobo Tom, as evidenced by the hobo shirt. My girlfriend, back in her hometown for now. I might go visit her next week. I'm not too sure. Good night. I saw the most amazing wrestling show. It was it blew my mind how amazing it was. I mean, I think we have surf here. Surf and turf. Surf and turf. Surf and turf. Filet. What was this match? Surf and turf. Surf and turf. Cheeseburger. Surf and turf. <laughs> Sound like the Swedish chef there for a moment. But I'm here to talk about NXT when they came to Daytona Beach. And I saw the girl with the shiniest wizard. See a smile on my face? I meet I met Nixon Newell. I have a selfie with Nixon Newell. And whatever her new name is, I have that on a piece of paper. I still want I still wish she signed it Nixon Newell. And Nixon Newell, formerly of WCPW fame, first ever WCPW women's champion. Again, shows some of my wrestling knowledge and background. So that goes back a couple years, too. But let's talk about NXT. This was the most amazing show ever. I mean, it starts off, Chris Hero is awesome. Kaya Sono, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. All I do is bump elbows with Kaya Sono, and he realized I was there to get selfies with, 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 with Nixon Newell. Again, I was so happy Nixon Newell acknowledged that she was Nixon Newell in WCPW. I mean, it, it just... Makes me feel better. Give me a fuzzy, warm feeling in, in my cold, desperate, pathetic pro wrestling fan heart. But she's like, I acknowledge the fact that I was Nixon Newell, and I was a fan. Of, and she acknowledges the fact that I was a fan of Nixon Newell. It's kind of cool. I think it was Manchester upon Time. I think. I forget where she was built from, or was it Nottingham? From Nottingham, England. I forget. I'll have to look that up later. And then I also met generic Texas woman. It seemed a lot nicer in, in real life. Look, look, didn't wrestle, but... Hey, you know what? I had fun. I had pictures taken. I can never now run for president. One less job for me. That's okay. My job is to pick up aluminum cans and keep the bums off. And it was... An amazing show. I mean, they start off running off who's going to be there and more. There were War Raiders. Nikki Cross was there. EC3. Um, Undisputed Era. Kyle O'Reilly. Roderick Strong. And Adam Cole! Baby! Along with a whole bunch of others. Let's get this show started. First off. First match of the night was amazing. Danny Birch versus Leo Rush.
Yeah, and for the first match of the night, this was a surf and turf match. Amazing. Again, I'll eventually show maybe something of more editing. Yes. Oh, wait, I could do that. Wow. Oh. Let me think about that. Maybe next time I'll, I'll have editing. Maybe I'll, next week I'll get some pictures in. Do some more editing. But back to the show. Danny Burke. Leo Rush takes his heelish time to get ready to begin the match. And it was just fun. Even the crowd was chanting, hurry up. Hurry up. The, the action in this match was amazing. Definitely has such a future in the 205 division and NXT in total. Again, he, he has a fast-paced match, a great talking heel. I mean, even more greater amount of wrestling skills. I mean, it was just amazing. Again, I mean, he was able to hang with a much bigger, larger opponent. Again, this is, again, the classic clash of styles. But I always mention, when you have st different styles of wrestling, and they can make it mesh somehow in, in a ring, it's amazing. This is why WWE, the WWE style, minus 205 Live and some NXT stuff, it's, it's so blah. It's, it's cookie cutter. It's the same old WWE style. Especially after coming watching off Lucha Underground. I mean, this was amazing.
again. It was just great. I mean, yeah, the power of Danny Birch made Leah Rush tap out. Surf and turf quality match. The second match. We have, I'm sorry for that pause, I'm trying to try and read my little chicken scrabble. Again, it's we're not great. I mean, it just got worse and probably my writing's getting worse. But again, this was Lacey Evans and Vanessa Bourne, again the heels, versus Jesse, the girl next door, and Nikki Cross! Oh, Nikki Cross is so awesome. She she has to lay off the coffee grounds though. I mean this was such an amazing match. I'm just going to show some videos from it after you see their amazing entrance.
I mean, Nikki just gets hyped about tagging. I mean, there's still something to say that Nikki Cross, she needs to be with Sanity. She needs to go to the NXT main roster and needs to be with Sanity. I mean, she's just great in let, making other people go over. Yeah, it was a great tag team isolation by both teams. The, the faces isolated the heels when they could. Again, traditional tag team tactics. The heels isolated the face when they could and get quick tags in. Again, traditional tag team wrestling. This was amazing. I can't say enough about Nikki Cross. She's just a little ball of fun energy. I mean, she can't be constrained. And she needs to be back with Sanity. And you'll see why.
Then again, that was always the heel folly. They try to do too much, too much. But it was it was worth it though. It, this whole match worked. I mean, Nikki started just rant and rave. She almost teased a heel turn on Jesse. Just enough to make you think this might be the last time I see Nikki Cross in, in NXT just eight rows away on the big screen. But she didn't turn. The heels won. They pick up the victory over Jesse. Lacey Evans hit her woman's right. She needs a better finish or whatever. Punched her the face. Knocked her out. That was the match. The third match. Match numero tres. For all those viewers who I do appreciate in South America and Central America. I think Peru and Brazil. And also some people in Spain. My fair maidens of Spain. Yes, thank you for watching this show. Again, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. You can also feel free to leave an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And this led us to our next match, which was Jason Chang versus Kai Sono. Again, amazing enough, this was, in a, this was a great face-on-face -face match. I mean, it was good stuff from both. Very technical. I mean, if you're into fast-paced, flippy stuff, this is not the match for you. But as far as being a good technical wrestling match, this was amazing.
Kaya Sono still does great work. I mean, he makes the other little guy look amazing. I mean, he's he's that true ring general, whereas he can take he, take control of anything in the ring. I mean, until he's kind of leading the guy the guy a little bit. The other guy, and I'll give him all the credit in the in the freaking galaxy. He can sell. Because he made Kaius Ono look like $10 million. Like he should be the New Japan heavyweight intercontinental galactic champion of the universe. And again, Kaius Ono is a professional. He, he made his opponent look good when he needed to. Again, this was a surf and turf match. <laughs> and I, at this point, I'm amazed. I'm like, What's what's gonna happen? I mean, they can't all be this good, but it is. I mean, there were so many there were near falls that actually worked. Roll up after roll up, and it, it just showed that the guy's really trying, and it makes it really look like it's a straight competition match. I mean, it makes it gives it the illusion of, of being I, real, but being being a true sporting competition. And again, I oh I, I I eat that stuff up. I love that stuff. That's a surf and turf match all day long, baby. You're gonna get a lot of babies because Adam Cole, baby, was there. And even though I got my with Nixon Newell, the, the girl with the Chinese wizard, one day I want my beautiful, more most amazing girlfriend, who has the ultimate Chinese wizard, to get her a picture with Adam Cole. Baby! But let's continue on. Then you have the, the fourth match. You have Dan Matha versus the Velveteen Dream.
And again, this was just an amazing match, too. I never thought Mantha could do this. I know the Velveteen Dream is more than capable of having a flaming on match. But the fact that Dan Mantha did. Wow. What they let you do in NXT just blows my mind. I mean, Dan Mantha would just be another monster. Either crushing people or like getting crushed, probably. But in NXT, he's the hammer. Or, and that guy's the nail. Or as he puts it, I'm the hammer. He's the nail. Which is still one of the best catchphrases yet. Even though no one wants to shout it out. Except for me, Hobo Tom. So I appreciate that. And this was a good match. Again, with this, you have a great clash of styles. You have the quicker, faster, more agile of Velveteen Green, where there's a big, strong bruiser of a heel in Dan Matha. I mean, this match could have the potential to be really short, had a potential to be really terrible, but this was a filet mignon match. We are not worthy, Velveteen Dream. We're not worthy, Velveteen Dream. We're not worthy, Velveteen Dream. I mean, again, between that and you see, you see, I guess professional pro wrestling fans there. I mean, Matha just played the heel so well. Oh wow. I mean, just trying to get count out wins, trying to, trying to win by every heel way possible. I mean, I, I still have, I still like his line. I'm the hammer and he's the nail. I mean, the back the backbreaker he uses it looks like a, he he really did break Velveteen Dream in half. But again, this was just an amazing match. Again, when you once you have that clash of styles, you don't need convoluted stuff. It's just good stuff. And then you have the international match.
And on one side, you have Team Brazil with, I forget who it is, but just call them Joe and Rinaldi. And their little chippy valet. I forget her name. You just saw it, though. Versus War Raiders. So you have Bill versus the Norway Vikings. Or what they should be more for Chris. No Viking. Techno Viking Team 2020. That's a better name than War Raiders. The only, my only, well, again, this was a really fun match. Again, very, very technical. I was shocked. I've seen the War Machine matches a little bit in New Japan, and they're just like brawls. Very powerful. This was very, very technical. I mean, it was like a lot of Matt. Matt wrestling, um, freestyle wrestling, Greco-Roman style wrestling, real Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy doing a float over into an arm bar, and then getting a tag. I mean, it was just amazing technical. It was it was really a tour de force, tour de force as far as that goes. I mean, NX. I mean, this also shows NXT can do both things. They can one develop their own talent, like the two guys from Brazil. I do apologize. One day I'll know their name. They'll get up there. So, so they can't. So they can really develop their own talent, and they also have that ability to draw in other talent from other promotions, and just build them up. So much, though. I mean, it was truly amazing. I think I, uh, one one little note: the one guy is wearing his Asics, and again, if if you do, if you are a high school wrestler, Asics are the classical wrestling shoe. And showing my age, I mean, they get the hot tags. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it almost looked like the human battering ram of the old, old way the bushwhackers did it. Pretty new train, new train war machine though. I don't think the bushwhacker, the Butch did. Luke passed away, or did I get it backwards? Did Butch pass away and Luke still around? I don't know. Feel free to comment and say, "Hobo Tom, you don't know what you're talking about," and just simply correct me. And then they did kind of a little toned-down version of the old Doomsday device from Legion of Doom. Overall, it was a fun, amazing match. 
Then we have a brief intermission. And just to tell them that WWE Live is coming to town on 729 on Sunday. I think the show starts at 5, I think. I texted my, my sister to let her know about that. Then we had E C three Ethan Carter the third versus Jackson Riker. Riker looks like he has to earn his patch from Forgotten Sons. I mean, it was good. I mean, the only bad thing about this match, and again, this was an amazing match. Told a great story, started slow, but it built, though, and it, and it put in the action with Cutler and Blake. They know how to heal it up. The only thing is that they're, they're like the next revival, and I'm kind of Scared if they ever get up to the main roster, I mean, you know, they're going to be treated like the revival. I think they're a little bit bigger, weight wise, and they look more physically intimidating than the revival do. Even though the revival are just like two tough guys, these look like two tough biker guys from a biker game.
I mean, I could hear Blake and Color talking out sitting in the top row. They were drawing back and forth. Again, with this, it's a really technical match. I'm like, this is amazing. They start, they dare call out Hobo Tom, that filthy, dirty, disgusting Daytona Beach audience. They said, you look homeless. It's a shout out to Hobo Tom. I'm not homeless. I'm a hobo. There's a difference. But again, it was a really darn good match. itself it was good i mean ethan carter the third went over he wasn't going to go over but again the, the the work by by blake and cutter was amazing and again this is a surf and turf match this is what happened when you, you put people together that know what they're doing or at least they train and then we had really the low point in the match on the, on the whole card was Suli versus Shayna baszler
I think it was a classic strong style, striking style match. Some of those shots look pretty stiff. Um, I, I, have to e I have to email this to one of my friends, like my two Chinese friends. They may get a kick out of this. And again, there were, of course, the chance Shane is going to kill you. A lot of submission style wrestling from Shane and Baszler. It looked kind of, again, the really, really wrestling based submissions. We we're twisting people up in pretzels. stiff. It was a good match. Shane and Baser came out from after after the match antics. Yeah, she's she's a heel champion. That's what she's supposed to do. Again, this is a low point. This was a cheeseburger. See, I don't exactly have my full graphics, but there it is, folks. This is your only cheeseburger that you'll see tonight. Everything else is surf and turf and filet mignon. Yeah. Yeah, this was a good, fun match. And again, because the face got beat up by the heel, the crowd eventually, eventually went around to China for her. They were vicious, though. Uh, when she was being choked out... Shannon Baser goes off, yeah, I'm the baddest woman now. Look at my NXT title. And poor Sue Lee's just in the ring being, of course, attended to the referees. The crowd was chanting, na, 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 hey, 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 goodbye. Which was vicious. Ooh, that crowd wanted some blood. Boom. In this corner. Representing the Undisputed Era, you have Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, and Adam Cole, baby! In the opposite corner, you have Raul Men Mendoza, and Tucker Knight, and Otis Dozovich. Heavy machinery. Hey! And this was good.
Kyle Riley loves his air guitar. I also do like the fact that Kyle Riley does the old school wrestling takedown drills. I mean, that just makes me feel warm and fuzzy. I was at one time a high school and one year collegiate wrestler. This was just amazing combo wrestler. Raul Mendoza, he could be on 205 Live right now, and he could be the champion. I mean, he was just amazing. It's almost a, a Lucha Libre style of wrestling. I mean, so so much combo moves, move after move after move. He went for like a good 10, 10 12, spot, 12 spot thing there.
I mean, Roderick's gone. He has gone full yield because he's no longer clean shaven anymore. Again, Raul had that strong style. Great tag team work. Again, both teams. In NXT, they know how to tag team wrestle. You isolate your opponent, beat him up. The other team eventually does the same thing. They use a little more heelish tactics, but, but it's all the same. I, mean, I was just waiting, and eventually it did happen. Well, they used poor Raul Mendoza, where heavy machinery used Raul Mendoza as a weapon and just threw him into people. Then classics, and then went back to classic storytelling. They, they worked over um, uh, Tucker Knight's knee, again, knee bars and everything else like that. Raul is just good. I mean, Dozovich, he did the worm. The only, my only thing is that it was a six man tag match. Like, it kind of didn't mean much. I mean, I'm kind of happy Bobby Fish wasn't there. He does not have good luck in Daytona Beach. Last time I saw him, he got busted wide open. But again, of course, undisputed era of Kyle O'Reilly, Roger Strong, and Adam Cole, baby, went over, rightfully as they should. And it was an amazing surf and turf match. It was good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think the only bad thing they didn't say when they were coming back. They just said WWE saw coming to town. After this, I don't want to see WWE. I want NXT. NXT. Again, thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see everyone later. And probably.